Hello, YouTube people. I'm here with Mr. Abbasi. Hello, Internet. It's le Internet in French. Le Internet. Um, so, he's not going to play in this video. If you think that's going to happen, I don't have the money to pay him to play because, you know, he's an artist. Artists should get fucking paid to do something. Yeah. And I don't have that cash. That's what's up, man. Yeah. I'm so, um, don't steal things. And Spotify oh, sucks. Um, so, he's here as a brand. So, I'm going to treat you as such. Okay. Uh, the brand is also very decadent because look at this. They're sitting on a Morgan. Because Why are we sitting on a Morgan? T t explain that to me. Well, uh, I find that like the solid state uh, stools don't sound and feel as good as the tube, the tube stools. So, yeah. And, and he's right. Don't use a camper to sit on because that shit sucks. <laughs> then yeah, again- Campers are great. Maybe not for sitting, but you know, for shredding. Oh, uh, oh, uh, the, oh, uh, why, why, why? Why are you saying all the wrong things? Yeah, well, I guess we have a different perspective. <laughs> oh, we have a different perspective on many things, but that doesn't mean there can't be much love here. Yeah, I like that you are opinionated, though. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I met him at uh, somewhere. I'm not going to say where. Secret undisclosed Secret location. Secret undisclosed location. And the first thing that came out of my, came out of my mouth was like, nobody needs eight strings. With the exception of what sometimes he does on it. And Charlie Hunter, and Frederick Thornton, and Javier Reyes, and he, you know. But that Thornton doll dude, that's Meshuggah, right? Yeah, yeah. I see, that's where you lost me. Dude, Meshuga rules. That's just noise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dad. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, dude, dude, how old are you? I'm. I just turned 36. I'm 40. I'm not. Why well, I'm older? I'm. I'm just too old, I guess. That it just might not be your preference, and that's okay. You know. So be, see, I'm. I'm not contra fan fret or even seven string i played a seven string when you were like i played a seven string in 1990. it's a good year to get your hands on a seven string i, I had the steve file multicolor universe do you still have that guitar because i'll buy it from you but maybe those are you, sick guitars I, I jumped on a stage and i smashed it on the stage and a chip came out in the back and then get, get this I had it repainted. A solid color? No, it became a blue to black burst with fog on it. And in the fog, I had the pyramids from the fretboard hovering. It looked stunning. It was really cool. Oh, you like completely. Okay. Completely. You could do it that way. But you, you couldn't want. fix the swirl. It was unfixable. Yeah, that's a, like a proprietary process. I, I did think. look for it the other week because whoever has it, I would buy it back. But it's gone. But um, hey, I don't have to buy it back because other companies are making great extended range guitars. Like, like a bossy guitar. Like a bossy guitars. You also make six stringy things for, you know. Yeah, and we do this pedal called the Pathos, which is it's kind of like a channel, distortion channel for a clean head. And the idea is that it can go from really delicate, dynamic, low gain stuff to that mid gain crunch breakup. We have a voicing knob that goes from this warm thing to more present, a little bit more drive, more compression. And then you can also just dime the game. And it's it's like a- You should have this demoed on YouTube by YouTube pedal demo guys. Working on it. And then there's this thing where we did a thing. Where we did it, where yeah, we did it. I played it and this sounds. Uh, honestly, like, I think it's, repre it's cool representation to get into other people's hands. Cause I do what I do and it's pretty specific, but we designed this specific to work with a range of playing styles. We're going to release a lot of NAM footage. We were blessed with a lot of amazing performers and they were all using this stuff and it'll show that it like isn't a one trick pony. See, if I want. would have to play it in my style because if I practice for another 30 years, this is not going to happen. We'll send you one. You are, pre you are, pre you are pretty brilliant on the instrument. On and when you do the clean stuff on the eight strings, I'm with you. Nice. It's brilliant. Yeah. It's just the that isn't for me. Okay. Whose man's is this? <laughs> <laughs> so, come on, let's talk about this. Yeah, what what yeah. do we have here? Well, what, I, what already, we... I already described the pathos. I'm holding Lorado, which is our, uh, this is our first sort of body shape. It's a beveled, ergonomically designed, you know, beautiful, beautiful thing. Wenge neck. Wenge neck. With it, a guitar tit. I like that you put a guitar tit on it. Uh, and it's Spanish, called a volute. Is no, that French? In Spanish, teta de guitarra. That's incorrecto. No, the guitar, that's a guitar tit. Um, Wenge, uh, Wenge neck, may, uh, sorry, it's an ebony board and it uh, has Ra fresh Rounded frets. Yeah. Nice. Grover Jackson's working on our stuff and 
he actually innovated that thing back in the day, decades ago. We have Fishman Fluence pickups, which are a really cool new pickup technology, which is a printed coil as opposed to a mechanically wound. And um, you have two voicings per pickup, so you're technically you getting... You have a five position or three position? Yeah, five, five position, because I really like... Uh, you have the single coil setting. Single video. coil and then like dual coil sounds. And uh, individual saddles for you know, separation and obviously to do the multi-scale thing. And you have locking tuners because every modern guitar needs locking tuners. Well, yeah, I like, you know, quick string changes and it's like really nice See, to do See, that's this. what I'm saying. Oh, Chris freaking Rodriguez. Hey, Chris. So I'm gonna grab another guitar here. Is it gonna have more strings? Yeah, like way more strings. So, uh, we stumbled ac across this really cool design opportunity. We found a shop that's laser printing images, super high um, DPI. It's like, it literally, you can, you can do whatever you find a digital file for. And so we want to do a design series where we offer a range of like graphics. Um, There's many things I like on this. I like the dots that are kind of going in a half moon pattern. Yeah. That is very nice. Um, and you know what I'm going to point out on this thing, right? Not yet. You the know of, the amount of strings. No, I don't now even I'm, care about. I'm scared. I, I don't even care about the strings anymore because now, Mr. Abasi, I'm flattered to bits because you at the shop asked me, "What do you think?" And the one thing I pointed out is that the gold hardware was distracting from the graphic. Oh yeah, yeah. And I don't see gold hardware anymore. Yes, your design input was well taken, and we went with black hardware, calmed it down a bit. This is really like a proof of concept. Uh, we. Sky's the limit with what we can do with it, but we, we wanted to just get stuff out and prove that this worked. And um, I mean, as you can see on the back, we can even, we're printing the images on the control cavity. This is anodized aluminum, actually. So the idea is um, this isn't necessarily a model as much as it's a proof of concept of what we can do. So if you hold on, I can show you something a little less. So this is way more subtle, unlike your ensemble. What are you um, talking about? This is in intellectual <laughs> cat. A freaking cat on there. It's a fat intellectual cat. That's sick. Okay, well, this is um, for the people who don't want something really like bright. This is a really subtle black on black floral pattern. And if you notice, the bevels are actually high gloss. Well, they're covered in human, you know, stuff. Thanks. So that part might be shiny now. Wait, wait, but, wait, um, wait, wait! I got. Look at, look at that. You can see your beautiful smile in there. So I'm really into this idea of uh, contrasting finishes. So this is a matte satin on the flat surfaces with the image and then the bevels reflect like completely differently because they're high gloss. So you got this beautiful sort of complement to the form and it actually is like a nice textural com complement too. So um, the contrast of the wenge and the matte black is also nice too. So I really like the fact that there's an opportunity to do something other than staining wood or painting it, you know what I mean? But that stuff looks great, but I feel like from the design element, there's so many opportunities with this, so we're really excited. But from the design element, and I was thinking about that as I often do in the shower after we met. Not in that way, you okay? Had to, you had to shower after meeting me? You had to wash it off. <laughs> oh, lordy. Uh -huh. No, um, <laughs> now you got me all, what? Yeah, yeah, come back. With the because we have two elements here, which are clearly uh, separated. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to, and that's a big question, could this, which is now the graphic, be a uh, flame maple or quilted maple? Yeah, because so- Because imagine what that would look like. Dude, yeah, I'm really glad you brought that up. This process, we can tweak the opacity, meaning we can shoot a ghost image. We can have it be like just a hint, or we can have it be opaque. So you can use figured wood and see the grain underneath it. Nice. Yeah, so... There's a lot of possibilities. Yeah, we're, we're, our wheels are turning, but, you know, Nam is now, and so we said, let's make two, show people what we can do. Now... Can't believe how many times you've had to change guitars in four days. Yeah. I think you're really going to like this, because I just showed you something that's pretty uh, unconventional, and then I'm going to show you this relic, uh, Tellian. This is ultra-conventional, but not. Yeah, yeah, you nailed it. So basically, um... I'm a Fishman Fluence artist, and they make these the wonderful Greg pickups. Set. Yes, Greg Cox is a telemaster, in my opinion, and he has a signature Fluence set. And we said, well, what if we merge our body shape 
with uh, the, the telly thing and do a relic telly. You see the neck is all worn. This is a brand new guitar, but it, it looks like it's, you know. Well, Grover knows how to freaking age guitars. Yeah. He didn't do this one. I think if he relic this one, it would be even better. We we uh, had another shop do it. He, he was busy making our yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, even the hardware is aged. But the idea is like, a, it's like a space telly or future telly thing. Or, I like space telly. Yeah, we're going to go with space telly, I think. So we've had a lot of bluegrass wait, wait, players. Wait a second, wait a second. Space telly would be ST, and everyone would think it's a strat, but that's funny. Yeah, we just want to abbreviate it, you know? <laughs> Yeah, so um, it also has a 10 to 40, 10 to 14 radius and 6105 frets, and um, it's got like a V, a V neck profile. I think for guys who like old tellies, it, it feels really, really good. Yes, yeah, slightly V. That's nice. I mean that 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 um, that heel joint. That's of course insane for the noodly people to go really high up. Yeah, yeah. That's not so, where the money is, but you so could. The, you can access the you know the whole. What's the weight on that? Oh, it might be the oh, largest guitar you. Ah, uh, oh. Uh, oh, yeah, you feel huh. real strong right now. Uh, <laughs> That's cool. And then uh, I'll just show this last one. Can I see this? And then if you just like, you know, sports cars, huh? this is from an M3, actually, this chart chartreuse. It's like a metallic um, goldish yellow situation. Man, this thing on stage, I, I, I've done one performance with it, and I'm looking at the photos. It reflects light. It's an amazing way. So, yeah, we just want to bring people cool shit yeah you, you, you're taking it to the next level yeah I mean, eight string is already the next level eight strings the next level but i don't feel like the eight string should fight the player so the multi-scale thing allows for traditional scale length in the treble so if you you do bends or your vibrato it won't feel like you've added like tension to your strings it actually intonates at the same point and what then, is the scale on the on, on the on the low uh, in your case e you dropped just, right yeah it's just above 27 inches so you have 25 and a half to 27 point something. <laughs> that was great. We, ju we just man. talked about you, Greg. It's all good things. Um, so the idea is that usually uh, eight string guitars have longer necks to accommodate the low tuning. But if you want to do legato or solos, you're you're on a t you're on a 27 inch neck. It gets a bit more difficult. I just uh, sorry for interrupting the millionth time, but but that's what I do. I'm rude. I'm a rude motherfucker. Um, I just reviewed an Ibanez XL that is all 27, and it was some of the most massive low tones that I've heard. But then you try to play solo on it, and all of a sudden you realize, ah, oh, I'm struggling because it's the string tension on the high strings is too much. Yeah, and you can get used to that, but if you're not used to it, it'll feel different than what you're used to. No guitar player wants to be fought by the guitar. I think um, there are players who are mainly rhythm players, and so having a fixed scale length is fine for them. I wanted to say, well, can I hand you an instrument and have it not fight you at all, even if it has more than six strings mm -hmm. on it? So that's the idea behind that. I've also narrowed the string spacing in between each string, so. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not ridiculous, yeah? It's not anything abnormal, but coming from, say, an Ibanez, which is more of a Floyd-style mm -hmm. spacing, you, com you, you multiply that by eight, and you have, you have a surfboard of a, of a fretboard. So the idea is that uh, if I could get a more classic string spacing, something like a Strat, it actually reduces the width of the neck uh, pretty noticeably. Yep. So our eight-string neck feels closer to what a seven would feel like. But I do a lot of fingerstyle and tapping, so I, didn't, I couldn't make it so tight you that it would be unplayable. You need to get between the strings, right? Yeah, so all the cording, your fingers fall in place, it's great. But don't you also do something with your thumb? Yeah, now that you mention it. And so getting in between those strings is uh, really important. Uh, the other thing is the body shape. Now, I uh, have a deep set neck, right? And so the idea is that most of the neck is shoved into the body, um, kind of placing you at the center here. And um, reduces the span of the guitar, so mm -hmm. it, it all feels a bit closer. Yeah, it, it, to me, it always feels weird if I have to play down here. Yeah, it's not the vibe. And then this this cutaway here allows for it encourages like a seated position where the guitar is in the middle, like a classical player. Like the uncool classical position. Yeah, but like a cool shred, like prog shred guy. You know what I mean? Up and here, the higher the instrument, the better you are as a player. We yeah, know, we know more, that. Come the on. more sweeps you can do. Uh, and then if you play a traditional way you can do that or you can you can do this even when i'm standing out I'll, I'll encourage the the guitar to you know go places with this thing so and then obviously the the heel we we know people look at the face of the guitar and they think well what if i want to play above the 12th fret but obviously um we've got this really cool concave we can retain the actual the thinness of the neck all the way to the 
point that it meets the body. Oh wait, so that's 12. Okay, so I had a guitar from Klaas, a German builder that yeah. has that kind of a... Yeah, yeah. And my problem with it was, once I got up here, bending to me was difficult because I had nothing to grab on with my thumb in the back. Yeah, so there are a lot of thumb over the neck players. This guitar obviously does not allow for that past this point, but you'll find that it's an intuitive guide. My whole thing is, um, when you put your thumb over the neck, you reduce the length of the available finger. You see how there's a trade-off. I'm, I'm fully yeah. with you. Yeah. The only thing that, that what, what would be cool is if there was this, Dave, film back, film back here. If there was a slight indentation that I can kind of grab on, I don't have to go around. Oh, I see what you're saying. Like right now, I would possibly, I know I've tried this on the guitar. I might slip a little bit. If I have something on the, on the, on the top, a slight indentation, like a millimeter, which mm. is something German for very small, um, a European, you know, yeah, imperial know system, yeah, metric system, metric system, that's that one. Yeah. Um, that might help. I haven't played this, but I know on a similar guitar I had problems with it. Okay, so my thing is, if I'm going to design a uniform approach to a neck, I'm going to use a degree of uh, objective, you know, perspective, meaning what's the best way for the mechanics of the hand? I know that people play in many different ways, but I find that a classical sort of placement of the neck consistently at the center of the mm -hmm. back, especially when the neck is this wide, you actually are encouraged because your fingers need to reach upward. If you put your thumb here, you have less finger here. Absolutely. But you know, there are guys, they play fine, they do whatever, but our objective approach is to encourage a sort of a centered thumb position across the neck. Yeah, uh, yeah. the correct position. Yeah. Uh, how much do you bend up there? Uh, I bend, but I go for, my thumb goes lower so that I can push my fingers okay, up. Okay, okay. I don't do the, the, that thing. You, do, you don't play traditional blues? Nah, I, I wish I do. I'm digging a lot of blues, blues players lately, like Eric Gales and, yeah, Jairus Mosey and uh, Josh Smith. Oh, yeah. These dudes. Or if you did, like, country double stop bends where you need to put a lot of force into All it. All that stuff. But that's... But those guys were here playing our guitars. And there's evidence of how well it works, and I, I was blown away. So well, they, then you know what? Then completely forget about everything I said, please. Well, you know, you have a lot of opinions. Oh, yeah. I'm just kidding. That's why you have a show. So I do. I review things, okay? I look at things and go like, ah, I don't know about this. No, I actually, I, I appreciate people who, like, know what they want. You know what I mean? I think that's, that's totally fine. Well, uh, you also have seven-string versions, see? Right? Yeah, yeah. Because this for me in a six would be like, well, I've got six strings. Eight is too much and a uh, six is perfect a uh, seven is perfect yeah this is like a cool little like ox bloods like you know eggplant color we did um and it's it's similar specs they're all basswood bodies wenge mm -hmm. necks and um you know this is a little bit more tame compared to the digital prints or the you know yeah, chartreuse fine. do you already have a rough price point on that uh, yeah, we'll be releasing pricing soon. We would love for these things to be accessible to people. So they're made in the USA, so that comes with its own sort of bottom line. But uh, we're a very lean like situation, and there's not really like a distributor and dealer network. So there's a way in which we can kind of allow for some flexibility as far as the cost of the consumer. So yeah, we want people to be able to play these things without like you know, forking over seven k. Yeah, they're nowhere near that. Yeah, yeah. good. Yeah. Well, you're, you're blocking me with your Abbasi guitar, uh, Mr. Abbasi. In, in <laughs> I like this guy a lot. Yeah, I like you too. Thank you, man. Yeah. Um, I also like this guy. Jason McNamara Hello. from Tokyo. Go back to me. Konnichiwa. 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 And um, I was just in Tokyo. I was actually now they're now. talking. Animals at the end, there was Tosin Abasi with his Abasi guitars. Uh, hopefully I can review the pathos, pay pathos. That we'll pedal. send you some stuff. Cool. And uh, we shall talk and animals, you know, bye-bye. Yeah. I'll see you soon.